we want to give you a tool to organize those calculations to kind of simplify down or at least organize all the different things that can go on during them. We're going to use stoichiometry and equilibrium. We're going to separate the two and highlight any type of reaction using acids and bases that might lead from one to the other. So the rule of thumb is anytime you have a strong acid or a strong base, a strong acid is something that's giving away a proton, giving away an H+. A strong base is something that's taking an H+. Strong implies that it's good at that particular job. We use a lot of not as good definitions, but really a strong S is something that is good at getting rid of an H+. Anything else that can come along and take that H+, probably will. A strong base is something good, that's good at taking an H+, if there's an H+, available to be removed, it will take that H+. So anytime you have a strong acid or a strong base, regardless of what it's reacting with, you can assume that reaction will go to completion, and therefore analyze using stoichiometry. And when I say stoichiometry, what I mean is you can use moles and you can assume that, that reaction will go to completion. Now for me, when I do stoichiometry, I do a BCA table, so we'll see that as we go. Uh, but if you use conversions or something to that effect, you'll be doing that analysis for here. So for our strong acid, let's assume all of our strong acids here are hydrochloric acid. Give me a little more space there. And for our strong base, let's assume that all of our strong bases are sodium hydroxide. So if I were to react hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, my reaction would go to completion and the H plus would transfer completely to the hydroxide to form water. And I would be left with the other two components, the sodium chloride. Okay. If I were to add a strong acid to water, HCl plus water, that again would go to completion. So I would end up where I had no HCl left over. I would obviously probably have some excess of water remaining but all of the HCl would transfer a proton to the water to form H3O plus, and therefore I would have the conjugate base chloride left behind. If I had a strong base plus water, this one's a little trickier. So we're not going to look at this from a perspective of dissolving in the water, rather we're going to look at this from a perspective of a chemical reaction. I know that dissolving can be a chemical reaction, uh, so I should say that a little more clearly. What we're assuming happening, happens here is that the hydroxide is removing an H plus from the water. And as that happens, we end up with the sodium ion left in solution. This forms a water particle, a water molecule. And then the water molecule has now had an H plus removed, and therefore it ends up with a hydroxide. Now your teacher probably taught you that when a strong base goes into water, that it just dissolves. That is true, but then that hydroxide from the dis dissolution is able to react with water molecules in a way where that the acid base kind of property makes sense. So there's our reaction for a strong base plus water. All of this will turn into this and this in water. Even if the hydroxide reacts with the water, we'll still produce another hydroxide. Okay. Now, if we get into weak stuff, so a weak acid, let's go ahead and take acetic acid or ethanoic acid. Or a weak base, let's go ahead and go with ammonia there. When I'm looking at something that's weak, it does its job. It gets rid of the H plus, or it takes an H plus, but it's not as good as it. So it depends on what it's paired with, what will happen. So if we do a weak acid plus a strong base, we're going to have our, because we have something good at taking that proton away, that's still going to go to completion. So this is still going to be a reaction that is analyzed from a stoichiometry perspective. We're going to assume that if we had equal amounts of these two things, that all of them would react, and we would end up completely converting them into their conjugate acids and bases and water. Okay. If we were to do a strong acid, such as hydrochloric acid, plus a weak base, such as ammonia, because this is so good at getting rid of its H+, plus, that, that that lone pair of the nitrogen is going to completely react with all of the HCl. We're going to end up forming an H4 plus and CO minus. The only time when we actually get into an equilibrium analysis that is three different reactions, or at least in a common introductory class. So if we have our weak acid here and we react it with water, that's a situation where I'm not going to have the reaction mode of completion. Rather, I'm going to have an equilibrium setup where sometimes the H plus comes to here and then sometimes it goes back. So at equilibrium, I will end up with some of the conjugate base, I will end up with some of the conjugate acid of water. 
uh, but likely I'll still have a substantial portion of reactants left, and therefore I need to do an equilibrium analysis if I'm dealt that particular reaction. I'm doing a weak base plus water. So let's go ahead and take a moment here. a case where the ammonia can take an H plus from the water to form a hydroxide and the conjugate acid of that weak base. But it's not great at doing that, and water is not great at giving away an H plus, and so therefore I'm going to establish an equilibrium. And the last one that we sometimes gloss over a little bit, but really is very important, in all of these situations, the end game is that the water molecules themselves react with themselves, producing hydroxides and hydronions. And so we have these kind of different scenarios here. Now this one, this reaction, its K expression has the Ka designation. This one has the Kb designation, and this one is Kw, which at standard temperature is 10 to the negative 14. Okay, now at different temperatures that can be different, uh, but anytime we're looking at hydroxide and hydronium concentrations, this is our equilibrium analysis we're doing. Anytime we're looking at a weak acid reaction with water, weak base reaction with water, these are our equilibrium analyses that we're using. The tricky part with acid base is that what will happen is a lot of times we'll end up with a situation where in these two reactions, the products of them will be one of these reactions. So if I look at this one here, if I react an excess of ethanoic or acetic acid with the limiting reagent of sodium hydroxide, I will make some acetate, but I'll have some of this in excess. So I will start with some of this and with some of this, but without any of this, or assumed zero amount. And therefore, I'm going to do an equilibrium analysis after I do my stoichiometry up here. I'm going to do my stoichiometry with this reaction, and I'm going to plug the results of that in to do an equilibrium analysis later. If I'm looking at this reaction, I could add a limiting amount of hydrochloric acid to an excess of the weak base, producing some of the conjugate acid and having an excess of this left over. Well, that means that I'm starting with some of this and this, along with the water, and therefore I'm going to do an equilibrium analysis after the fact. At the end of these, whether I'm looking at the H3O plus or the hydroxide from up here, or I'm looking at the end amount of H3O plus or hydroxide down here, I can finally plug those in here where my pH, pOH analyses can continue. So which of these equations works for which actually organizes a lot of the pH calculations. So what I now want to do is kind of walk you through that process with some specific ones so we kind of get the idea. Okay, so I have 40 milliliters here, that's 0 0.0400 liters, and 0.1 molar NaOH, that's a strong base, added to point, or 100 milliliters, which is 0 0.1000 liters of 0.1 molar acetic acid, that's a weak acid. Okay, so a strong base and a weak acid is a stoichiometry calculation, so I'm going to go ahead and write this in yellow, so NaOH plus the acetic acid. So when I'm doing a stoichiometry problem, what I want to do is I want to find everything in moles. So to find moles when you're given the concentration and the volume, you're going to want to multiply the volume in liters times the concentration. So I have 0 0.004000 moles of NaOH. I have 0 0.01000 moles of acetic acid. I have none of this to start with. But for me, I would do a BCA chart from there. However you would solve this stoichiometry would be fine. I'll give myself a little more space. So this is my limiting reagent. All of this is going to run out. I have zero left. This is going to drop by 0 0.004, so I end up with 0 0.006 moles left. And this is going to increase by 0 0.004, so I have 0 0.004 moles of that remaining. Now, I need to turn that into concentrations now because next we're going to set up a second reaction that involves equilibrium. So this is in 140 milliliters. I'm going to divide that by 0.14 liters. I'm going to divide this by 0.14 liters. And so this right here is going to come out to be 0 0.0429 molar. And this right here is going to come out to be 0 0.0 2.86 molar. So now we're going to look at our secondary reaction. What we have now, which is confusing for a lot of people, is we now have a situation where we have a weak acid and its conjugate base. A lot of people want to turn this into a reactant. This reacts with this. But that doesn't make any sense. It's just going to turn back and forth into each other. 
instead what we're going to do is we're going to choose our equilibrium reaction between this and water. Because we have this, we have water, but this time we're starting with some product present. So now what we can do is plug in these initial concentrations. We have 0.0429 molar of this. We have 0.0286 molar of this. Uh, we're going to assume we have zero of this to start. And water doesn't apply to equilibrium calculations as long as we have some present. So this drops by a certain amount, we'll call it x. This is going to go up by a certain amount. This is going to go up by a certain amount. So we're filling out our ice or rice chart. Now, 0.0429 minus a really tiny amount is still going to be about 0.0429. So we're going to ignore the minus x, and likewise we're going to ignore the plus x here. 0, 2, 8, 6, and x. 0 plus x is x, we can't ignore that. So when we do our calculation, we're looking at our k expression, where k is equal to the acetate concentration at equilibrium times the hydronium concentration at equilibrium over the acetic acid concentration. Okay. If we plug that in, what we get is that the Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, is equal to 0.0286x over 0.0429. We're going to multiply this by this, divide by this. We get an x value that is 2.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. And x is our H plus concentration, so we can find our pH now by taking the negative logarithm of that, which comes out to be a pH of 4.57. So, and this particular problem is very long and difficult, but what we did was we organized this by first doing a stoichiometry neutralization reaction and then taking the products from that, figuring out the concentrations and using them to do the equilibrium analysis of the weak acid in water. So by organizing this in that framework, it at least gives you something where you can kind of start to analyze what do I know how to do and what do I not know how to do. Without that, this can be a very messy process that takes a very long time to do. So if you're just plugging blindly into equations, I highly recommend you start to do your analyses like this. Let's look at a couple other ones. Here we have 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. That's a strong base. Added to 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid. That's a weak acid. It's a strong base plus weak acid. We're doing stoichiometry. We've got 0.01 moles of each. I'm going to ignore sig figs here and speed up a little bit. So NaOH plus acetic acid yields sodium acetate. So by having 0.01 moles of each, we're kind of at a point where we're an equivalence of the two, and we'll have no excess or limiting, we'll just have both things run out completely. So both limiting, uh, and we'll end up with 0.01 moles of product. Sorry, I'm putting a so that after the reaction is completed. So because that's in 200 milliliters, we can divide that by 0.2 liters, and that's going to come out to be, what, 0.5? Sorry. 0.05 molar, sorry. So now if we look, now we have a situation kind of like before, except this time we don't have any weak acid left over. So now we're looking at a different reaction, but it's still going to be an equilibrium. What we have is we have the conjugate base. So we have C2H3O2 minus, and we have water left over. So now we're looking at a weak base plus water, and those two will react, and we'll end up forming the conjugate acid a little bit again, and this time we'll form hydroxide. So now, instead of looking at a Ka expression, we're looking at a Kb. Okay, well, luckily, we can find the Kb by doing 10 to the negative 14 over this Ka here. So 10 to the negative 14 divided by the 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And 
is 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. So now we can say, okay, we have 0.05 molar of this to start. Zero of this, zero of this, dropped by x, but we're going to ignore it because it's going to be very little. Goes up by x, goes up by x. So for our kb expression, we end up with the kb is equal to x squared over this 0.05 molar. We know kb up here, so we're going to take that, we're going to multiply it by 0 0.05, we're going to square root that. So x is equal to 5.27. 10 to the negative 6, and if I negative log that, that doesn't give me my pH, it gives me my pOH, which is 5.3, 5.28. So to get my pH, I'm just going to subtract that from 14, and my pH is 8.72. So again, by doing this, we set up a situation where we get a stoichiometry analysis that we can then use to do equilibrium. So even in the most challenging of questions, really helpful if we organize it. Other situations are going to be a lot more straightforward. So here, we're looking at a case where we have 0.1 molar acetic acid. So in that case, we have a weak acid, and there's nothing else. Well, there's not actually nothing else. It's a solution. So it's weak acid plus water. So now we can go through very quickly and say, OK, here I have my acetic acid plus water. And therefore, we're looking at an equilibrium warm H3O plus and C2H3O2 minus. And we can quickly set up, we had a 0.1 molar. Oops, minus x. We're going to ignore the minus x. We have zero and zero of these to start, plus x, plus x, x, and x. So again, we end up with a situation where we can go ahead and say that our Ka is equal to x squared well, in this case, it's 0.1 molar, um, and so we can take 0.1 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, the square root, we can solve for x, which is 0 0.001344, then we can take the negative log of that, and we get a pH of 2.87. So again, even though this is a simpler question, if I Instantly going to what do I have? It's an equilibrium stoichiometry. We easily set up our reaction, and from there the processing works out really nice. So the organization of stoichiometry versus equilibrium is really nice. Um, last one, I just want to show you one where it's strong acid and strong base. This one is going to be an example where clearly we're looking at the stoichiometry to start. So in this case, we have. 0.1 molar, 100 milliliters, that's 0.01 moles. And 60 milliliters, 0.1 molar, that's 0.006 moles. So HCl plus NaOH yields NaCl plus water. We have 0.006 moles, 0.01 moles, zero, and we'll just ignore the water. All of this reacts into my limiting reagent. I have zero left. Some of this reacts to my excess reagent. I have some left over. And then we end up with some sodium chloride that's not going to influence the pH. But then we have 0.004 moles of NaOH left over. And then we say, well, how much solution do we have? We have 160 milliliters. We're going to divide that by 0.16 liters to get the concentration of hydroxide. And that comes out to be 0.025 molar NaOH. That's in excess. We can take the negative log of that. And that will give me my pOH. Oops, sorry. Which is 1.6, which means that my pH would be 12.4 for that particular set. That makes sense. I have excess, strong base. I should have a very high pH. Okay. So again, uh, technically this part here, we could have set up a water plus water equilibrium reaction to get through all those calculations, but hopefully you get the idea then of how to use equilibrium and stoichiometry to set up your analysis in a way that gives you a little bit more feedback and gets you to the final point where you want to be a little bit more organized fashion.